The speed of the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan has shocked the international community. In Washington, there's been condemnation from both sides of the political divide over the Biden administration's decision to stick with an August 31st deadline to withdraw U.S. troops. The Taliban had taken advantage of the vacuum left by departing troops sweeping through Afghanistan in a mere matter of weeks. Natasha Hussein reports. Taliban fighters now patrol Kabul. The capital was the last major city in Afghanistan to be targeted. Oh, the militant group captured the presidential palace on Sunday. The government collapsed and President Ashraf Ghani fled the country. The U.S. has defended the hasty exit of its troops as the Taliban accelerated its advance in recent weeks. The president had a hard decision to make, and that decision was what to do with the remaining forces that we inherited when we came to office that, uh, that were in Afghanistan. Uh, with a deadline established by the previous administration to get them out uh, by May 1st. Protesters outside the White House are accusing the government of betrayal. President Joe Biden had promised to leave Afghanistan before the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks that led to the U.S. invasion. But then on Sunday, the Pentagon announced the deployment of 6,000 soldiers to facilitate the evacuation of U.S. citizens. That brings into question whether it'll meet its August the 31st deadline. The Taliban takeover brings to an end America's longest war. At its peak in 2011, there were 130,000 U.S. and NATO soldiers in Afghanistan. At least 3,500 foreign troops were killed in the two-decade-long conflict. Washington has spent $970 billion in its failed effort to bring a solid government and security forces. The UK and Germany, which had the largest military presence after the US, spent a combined $50 billion on the conflict. With the Taliban takeover, an estimated 17,000 Afghans who worked for the US are now at risk of reprisals. It is a colossal failure and it is a humiliation. I mean, it's a, it's a complete failure of a military uh, political strategy of 20 years duration. As countries scramble to evacuate their embassy staff from Kabul, Russia and China have bucked the trend, saying their missions are staying put. The Afghan Taliban have repeatedly expressed their hope to develop good relations with China, that they look forward to China's participation in the reconstruction and development of Afghanistan. Amid chaos at airports and border checkpoints, more than 60 nations, including the U.S., U.K. and Germany, have issued a joint statement calling for the restoration of security and order, and for all citizens, be they Afghan or foreign, to be allowed to leave the country. But with the Taliban now firmly in charge, the international community can only hope the militants listen. Natasha Hussein, TRT World. Let's uh, bring back the former Afghan government advisor, Torek Farhadi, who joins us from Geneva. Hi again, Torek. Firstly, inter the international community, the Western powers who are still present in Afghanistan, are now more preoccupied with evacuating their citizens and their families from the country right now. But no country in the world has yet officially recognized the Taliban as the new leaders and the new government of the country. Do you expect that to happen anytime soon? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, we all agree that the evacuation of the interpreters uh, was not well organized uh, by uh, the U.S. authorities. And uh, um, since April, at least, uh, President Joe Biden announced that uh, the U.S. was leaving, and this could have been done better by a superpower. But uh, today we had uh, very sad images of uh, people clinging onto planes in order to leave Afghanistan, and uh, they fell from the plane. There was a report in Afghanistan that three people, people fell from the sky, actually, because they had just uh, clung on a plane that took off. As far as recognition, today there is a meeting of the U.N. Security Council in uh, New York, um, um, in a short while, there will be condemnations of violence, etc., in Afghanistan. But the fact is, is that since the Taliban have arrived in Kabul, there's no violence, and there is no more violence in Afghanistan. And the only violence we see is at the airport, where uh, people got killed in Bruce, uh, to today. <laughs> Sorry, I mixed with Farsi. And. Uh, uh, um, uh, China will uh, certainly recognize uh, Taliban uh, uh, the quickest, 
Uh, Russia has said we will recognize Taliban if they abide by human rights uh, rules. Now the Taliban are a, a little slow to move, and uh, they, if they were wiser, they would have just said, yes, we recognize the human rights uh, tenets, and they would have been recognized by the world. But they are tough people, and they want to demonstrate that they, their philosophy includes human rights, which is defined in a different frame than what the UN calls human rights. So that's what's happening here. Uh, the Taliban say we respect human rights, we respect your, your women's rights and their Muslim tenets, and, uh, but the definition of the world for human rights is uh, the definition of the United Nations. And the government has to say, yes, we abide by this, for this government uh, to be recognized in a case like this. And Taliban are, uh, didn't catch uh, this idea, and they are not saying anything to be recognized faster. In fact, they are very slow in forming a new government as well. They were a fighting force, but perhaps not a governing force. Can I ask you more about China and Russia? You mentioned earlier that uh, you believe that China's motivation in engaging with the Taliban might be economic. Uh, they could be looking to uh, exploit Afghanistan's vast mineral resources. But what would Russia's motivation be? Is it similar to what China is looking for? Both China and Russia's motivation in Afghanistan is stability. Because if Taliban take over and bring a sort of an iron hand of stability, then other groups such as the uh, Uyghurs or such as the uh, Daesh, um, ISIS, and uh, so many other groups that um, have fighters in Afghanistan but have come down from Central Asia will not be operating in Afghanistan because Taliban will be able to give them this pledge that uh, they are going to control all of that. This is the pledge that uh, ex-president fugitive Ashraf Ghani couldn't be, uh, give to the world. Every time he met a world leader, he was asking for help. Taliban is not asking for anybody's help, but they are saying, we can give you this pledge. We will control the situation. They have controlled Kabul since two days, not a bullet shot fired, nothing. So um, uh, they want stability first in Afghanistan. They don't want Afghanistan's troubles to spill over Central Asia. Uh, Russia has less economic appetite because it's not yeah. into mining, etc. It's more a geostrategic game for Russia and also protection of Central Asian states and their political systems, because the leaders there also are not very much uh, democratically elected, I could say. But the China, uh, yes, China has a, um, a geoeconomic uh, uh, plan on Afghanistan and on this entire region, basically. China is undeniably the superpower of Asia. It sure is. OK, uh, Torek Farhadi, we will have to leave it there. But it was really good to get your analysis, as always. Thank you for that.